Hi, and welcome to the weekly IPFS in web browsers and GUI team sync call. Um, we're going to switch the order of things around a little bit and start with the agenda items. And on the agenda today is <gasps> Lidl with quick demos of the Brave integration and DNS and DNS link interrupt and STX, and then me talking about the format of this call. Um, and then with the remaining time, we will do a round of how's it going, what are you working on? Um, so Lyle, do you want to lead us off? Yep. Uh, let me like quickly share my screen and uh, move some stuff around. Yep. Uh, so I will be borrowing a little bit from my updates. Basically, we have a new release of IPFS Companion. Uh, the first demo will be about the Brave integration. Uh, so we have a new beta release uh, of IPFS Companion, and what's interesting is that we have improvements in embedded HTTP gateway. Uh, so you can, uh, let me see if I can, yep. So I have uh, IPFS Companion uh, built locally using this command here, and it's already loaded uh, into Brave. It's like, one of the latest, like not the latest one, but uh, Brave Nightly, I think. Uh, so here's the IPFS companion. It's uh, disabled right now. Uh, yep. So if we go to preferences and enable IPFS integrations, it will try to connect to remote mode. But here we switch to embedded mode. And on the right, we see that JS IPFS. Uh, started working and it already has like 12 peers, 15 peers, and it's connecting to the swarm. And if we go to the web UI, it, it's loading from, uh, from local gateway. It takes a moment because it's like an empty, empty repo. Yep. So, uh, this is the usual stuff. What's new is that now we fixed uh, multiple issues around loading Wikipedia, uh, why Wikipedia is uh, important uh, or tricky to get right. Uh, basically, uh, the location of Wikipedia is under IPNS namespace, which was not implemented in JS IPFS. Uh, then there's a DNS link, which was also a little bit tr uh, tricky to support in JS IPFS. Uh, and there is the third uh, thing is the wiki itself is so big that we had to shard the wiki directory and sharding support uh, under IPNS namespace and in. MFS was also a little buggy or even missing. So all those pieces uh, landed in PRs to JS IPFS and uh, related libraries. And what I did, I picked uh, them uh, and assembled a branch of uh, JS IPFS that had all the missing pieces. And then I switched IPFS companion to that version. So hopefully when I try to open Wikipedia now, it tries to load the content. Uh, and voila, so uh, the Wikipedia works now. Woo Embedded note, which is like super cool because I really, like I believe this is like the, the poster child for gateway. If uh, Wikipedia loads fine, most of other like we we solved most of the problems and uh, the remaining like 20 percent uh, should be much much easier what's pro sort of uh, still problematic is that uh, the content discovery uh, is super fast if you are connected to a node that has the content i probably uh, I, I connected to a, like a machine in my local network or one of uh, preload servers has this content, but if, we, if you go deep enough, you will uh, stumble upon uh, like some, uh, some delays. So that's like the first demo I wanted to show you. If you want to experiment, there's like a new better release. 
uh, and I promise the remaining demos will be much faster. So uh, ENS is Ethereum name service. And I believe I have like a very quick demo of that. So um, we had some dis initial discussions about, about uh, running uh, uh, sort of like delegated DNS resolver for ENS. And we already have IPFS, uh, we already have DNS link support in, in uh, IPFS. Uh, so what I've done, uh, we have a, a DNS link resolver in Go IPFS. I run this uh, Go IPFS instance in Docker and I override DNS servers to ones that run delegated ENS resolver. Um, so that should take a moment to start. And I really hope I won't run out of memory on this machine. If I drop, I apologize. It's a very, uh, very small laptop that I've dropped multiple times. And yep. So uh, the gateway started and we can now probably uh, let me I hope you can see here there is a domain name under ETH link. It's will probably take a moment to resolve. Um, hopefully it won't take long. I need the holding music baked into IPFS companion. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably like need to like super cut this or something. Um, anyway. From, uh, from the, high, the high level is that you've added support for DNS link resolution of these domains. Yeah, so what we've done is basically we reuse the NS link support uh, to add support for ENS. Uh, so if you have a ENS domain under like IP, uh, uh, under ETH, mm -hmm. you just add that link and set uh, those uh, experimental uh, DNS servers and you will get, uh, get a, a capability of resolving. Unfortunately, for some reason, it does not resolve right now. It's possible that the, like, the resolvers are just down <laughs> for some reason, because those are uh, like experimental ones. I won't uh, hold you on this one. Sorry about that. Uh, oh. It worked this morning. Can leave, um, it, leave it running through the call and then we can check back at the end. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, third demo, it will be even faster and I hope it will work hey Lido, don't worry demos get you bonus points there's no oh, need to gosh, be as it's like, um, yep so uh to make it more interesting so if you are interested in signed http exchanges or did not re read about it there's like an issue in in web browsers repo with all the details uh what i will show you now is just a very quick demo uh, for that you need uh, google chrome or Chrome, I believe Google Chrome uh, 74 or later. So here it is. And what, uh, what we will do is to just open SXG file from our public gateway. You can see it's, it's just a regular file. And, and, Wait a minute. and what happened is uh, it loaded, it detected the content type, which is, uh, which is application side exchange version B3. And Chrome then, if it gets a response with this content type, it unpacks uh, signed HTTP exchange and uh, sets the proper origin in location bar. So it looks like you fetch this uh, website from ampackageexample.com, but you did not. You used IPFS gateway for loading. And uh, I mentioned it because uh, 
if anyone wants to start playing with signed uh, HTTP exchanges, you can just add content to IPFS and then load it from our public gateway uh, into Chrome and you should be able to experiment that way. It should work out of the box. And that's my, that's my uh, two and a half demos I want to do. What's the status of the SXG? Is that, we, we were on an origin trial and now it's being rolled out more widely? Yep, so uh, in the beginning of this year, uh, it still required a HTTP server that returns uh, XG file to send additional origin trial token and you had to refresh this token. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it rolled out as a stable, as a stable uh, feature of uh, Google Chrome. So anyone who is running stable uh, Google Chrome is able to just load signed HTTP exchanges. Uh, it's still sort of safe because they are like capped and they expire after seven days. So that is, even if it's sh it shipped, but it's still sort of like not uh, for archival purposes, still for experimentation or, or for distributing content that is not very important uh, because it will like expire after seven days. Uh, what would be uh, interesting is to add support for this content type to Go IPFS and JS IPFS gateways. So right now we've set this uh, HTTP header uh, for content type and also like we disable, we've disabled uh, my type sniffing uh, on the uh, brow browser uh, end. What we could do is to add, basically detect uh, that the SXG file is returned to user from the gateway at the Go IPFS or JS IPFS level and set the correct headers. That way, if you run it lo on your local host or if you already are running public gateway, it would work out of the box. Uh, it would probably uh, require a discussion. Do we want to uh, enable it? But I believe. Uh, it's worth discussing. So I'll probably open an issue on that and link to in the release notes. Yep. Super cool. Question from Dietrich. What, what is the status of any other browsers implementing support for this or something like it? Signed uh, HTTP exchanges. Uh, well, if changes land in Chromium, then probably browsers that also use Chromium like Opera, Brave, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> those, those browsers would probably support signed uh, HTTP exchanges. That's my answer. <laughs> Any word <laughs> from Freedom Fox? <laughs> uh, Jim Pick actually shared a, a fantastic video of a discussion about this from the author of the spec at the IATF, last ITF meeting. It was uh, contentious to say the least. Um, one, of the, one of the problems here and one of the challenges for us as a project who are pretty high profile and adopting a technology like this is it's kind of a public signaling of approval for this standard if we rush forward. And the decoupling of content and origin for uh, a content location in this particular technology for us is super important. So we kind of want to poke, poke, poke that forward. But at the same time, um, most of the industry really sees this as a uh, amp in, in sheep's clothing. So. I think there's there's some work for us to do if we are interested in seeing this technology mature and adopting it more widely and seeing other people adopt it in either, uh, well, one, influencing the standard to be able to meet the broader security model and expectations that people have because it's generally considered pretty dangerous. I don't know if all those Chromium-based browsers uh, have signaled that they would support it. Um, but two, also telling a narrative around why it's important for from a decentralization standpoint. And if, if, if we tell that story in a way that makes sense that people understand that Google can't own that and that decoupling of content location has other benefits that help us move out from the control of those bigger corporations and, and give people more agency, then, then maybe there's a win there. But it, it's, a, uh, it's a, a delicate path that we tread. That seems like a super important point, very well articulated. Have you written your 
concerns about that down anywhere? No. Can I encourage you I, to? Because yeah, you, I'm going to post that to Scuttlebutt. You, you framed it well. Um, okay. Next up on the agenda, unless there are any more questions for Martin about the things, it's actually all the things he showed. No. Okay. Um, Martin has a question. You do. I do. I just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it finally loaded. <laughs> yeah. So, um, why I I think I know why it took so long. So probably uh, like the ENS guys re restarted their DNS uh, resolver server, and the way the DNS resolver server works, it the first time you ask for a specific domain. In this case, this is IPFS ENS test ETH. If it does not have uh, like that domain resolved in cache, it will go to Ethereum blockchain and resolve it. So that prob probably took a bit longer, but now it's uh, resolved and it's like cached on multiple levels on the resolver level and then on the DNS level, uh, which is like quite cool. Um, yep. Very cool. Very cool. Next That's up. One quick yes, question. Chris, Chris Waring, go for it. Um, I'm super interested to wonder if we do we have any option to control some of the loading experience, uh, maybe with that deeper integration in Brave. Um, obviously, it's doing all the requests under the hood, and it's probably not in our domain. But um, is, is that something that we could potentially integrate in at some point? Uh, I believe, like the the proper. Like the proper question is, uh, there are some things in IPFS which take some time to load sometimes. Mm. And it's not only ENS, it's uh, not only IPNS. It sometimes like the hash is hard to discover. It takes some time to discover it over DHT or stuff like that. Uh, so basically, it would it be possible to display some sort of like the loading screen if it takes longer than a few milliseconds, right? I, I, I guess the issue is like in an ideal world when everything is fast and smooth, then it will work just like the current yeah. web. Day. But in, in the current world, it's more like this experience seems broken to the user uh, for a long period of time. And then you, you kind of, you know, you're waiting for things to resolve when actually, you know, it's a difficult problem. We do have to educate people a little bit. So I think it's kind of, we have, if we have some opportunity ever, uh, to do that, then it would be a good use um, uh, to educate people. And if there is a way to do that, but I don't know whether that's beyond the, the model that we're integrating with in the browser. Um, I, I believe uh, with existing APIs, we should be able to, uh, like we, we should be able to tell if the content is already in your no local nodes cache. And if it's uh, in your local nodes cache, it will just load. But if it's not in the, uh, your nodes cache and it's the main request, namely the, it's the request for the address in location bar for the entire like page frame, uh, we could then redirect to some sort of like a loading screen informing user okay. that we are reaching for DHT and make it more like uh, educational and more, uh, or useful than just waiting and looking yeah. at it. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because it's like, well, you can't present too much information because it could resolve in seconds. And then it's like, oh, you present loads of information and it's resolved automatically. Yep. Okay, I won't hijack anymore, but thanks. Well, right. it's, um, it's an important issue that's come up a bunch in different guises. Uh, if we do a good job of demonstrating the valuable work that other nodes on the network are doing on your behalf. We convert the, this is taking on time into like, oh, this is an interesting learning opportunity. Um, and a kind of, you know, this is what decentralization looks like. Sometimes it's not as fast, but it is decentralized. So uh, we have to kind of play to our strengths there and be like, look, there are, you know, you're, you're reaching out to a dozen peers, not, some centralized server. And just showing a spinner is the worst. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah. It just feels like a slow HTTP request. Yeah. Um, there's also an open issue on companion to, at this stage, just behave a bit more like a value add, like do HTTP if the network is present and then 
slowly cache things in the background to IPFS. Yeah, um, Martin's just dropped the issue in that. I think, I think there's kind of two avenues of, two ways to attack that problem. One is better, finding ways to present progress. And I think the progress, as soon as we know that something is taking more than like three seconds, like demonstrating what IPFS is doing will, will give us a lot more value than yeah. I think. We turn a frustration into a nice experience where it's like, oh, actually, some yeah. exciting, an Easter egg that happens. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the only thing I'm trying to dissipate is because that Very expectation much. for long tail will be, oh, this is this is slow and not working. Um, Very much. Very much agree. Um, let's continue. Well, it's uh, no, it's important because it's one, it's a thing that's been on the list of things to do for over a year, and there hasn't been any progress on it. One problem is getting is is that IPFS is commands are all based around a kind of unspoken idea of transparency of access. So that it doesn't matter whether the block is local or somewhere on the network or perhaps not on the network. The APIs that we have today aren't great for knowing which code path this request is gonna go down. So it's, you don't know, it's like, it's interesting that Idle says that you can know whether a block is in your block store or not, because it's not trivial um, to know whether the request is going to take like less than a second or possibly never resolve. Um, that and and this gives you this kind of nice command line experience of like I can just put any CID in here and whether it's local or not, the magic happens. But then from an app developer's point of view, it's actually really difficult because you don't know how you, you can't set users expectations very well so i think it's i think it's something that needs to bubble its way up to the list of priorities hmm. i kind of <laughs> see like something like a health bar like you see at spotify for instance when you know the track has not got many peers so you yeah. load that and it takes a little bit longer to resolve but if you had the plugin that's and when you hover over a link you could see that yeah. sort of health status then you'd know straight away it's like oh this is going to come this yeah, week, yeah, we have we have um, designs from Agatha that show like in your file list, like a little health bar next to each file icon that would be the result of running a, a, a DHT find providers request for each one. But um, that particular it's expensive, I imagine, super expensive. Um, <laughs> just it, it can take minutes to get the results of that. And also, you asking the DHT is always like an open ended question, you're like how many nodes on the network are there? But uh, yeah, but it's it, the, the key point is to like, let's let's bubble this up the list of priorities. Certainly like it should be, it should make an appearance on next quarter's priorities because otherwise if we don't fight for it, we'll just never get around to it. Uh, da, 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 da. What was we gonna talk about? So I had everything set up nicely and then I plugged in a second screen and now everything is difficult again. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the purpose of this call and I'm very happy about the way this call has gone because it's been open-ended discussion about a list of topics that are important, not what the baggage, the history of this call was when it was like a team of three people, it, it worked pretty well as a like, what did you do last week, what are you doing next week? But as the number of people on the call grows, I'm finding, I kind of want to, uh, my proposal is we, we change the idea of this call to be there's a topic or two or three, like there's an agenda for this call and they're topics that are meaty enough that are worth discussing. Maybe one of them is like a demo of where we're at with Brave integration. Uh, maybe one of them is like, where are we at with the UI component libraries? But to set the agenda far enough in advance that, that ideally we could start to invite guest speakers to these calls to come and like add some other opinions. Um, and so just to focus the call on discussion on a topic. Um, so some things that have changed in the background for me are I'm now having one-on-one -on -one calls with each person in the GUI team to, tr to try and like do the project planning side of things and just get people's ideas and get, get sync. Um, and then I was talking to Chris and he was like, look, we're generating all these videos that have good content in but they're going onto YouTube with just like IPFS GUI and in web browsers and a date stamp. And like the content is interesting. If you're interested in IPFS, like some good stuff happens on these calls, but once it's on YouTube with a date stamp, it's kind of dead. Um, 
so we could kind of get if it's it, I see that as more of a fringe benefit than the core reason to make this change. But I think it is worth um, it's also worth factoring that in. Like if one purpose of this call is to keep the community aware of the latest in GUI and in web browsers world, like setting a topic for the call, talking about that topic, publishing that topic to YouTube would produce better results in informing the community about what we're up to. Um, so the proposal is like, lead with the agenda. Don't dispense with the everyone must do a check-in kind of idea. Like everyone, don't, not, not everyone on the call needs to say what they did last week and what they're doing next week. Uh, but then as a nice healthy ritual, uh, using our matrix slash IRC chat rooms to just ambiently inform your team what you're doing. Just in the morning, when you're about to start work, just say like yesterday, here's what I worked on, this is what blocked me, this is what I'm gonna be looking at today. Because I find like a weekly stand-up doesn't really achieve anything, because it's like, oh, you're looking at that today, I know to kind of tickle you in the next hour, because I have some thoughts about that. If you, if you let me know a week later, I'm like, oh, oh well, I've missed the boat on that, but it's good that you worked on it. Um, that's my proposal. How do people feel? I know that this call has sort of got a kind of nice regular flow to it and people sort of know what to expect. So I don't want to just arbitrarily change it, but it seemed worth doing. I'm getting thumbs up from Dietrich. Hugo looks like he just doesn't want to talk about admin anymore. Oh, that's a thumbs up. Terry, Terry's not visible. Hi. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. So my only concern is that you may not be proposing skipping this, but the thing that I find most useful about this call is at those times when I'm like partway through a project and could really use some feedback on UX, like having something as a demo and then getting some good suggestions about what direction to go in. So that's mm -hmm. the thing that I'd like to still have here, but I'm totally mm -hmm. fine with not reading through the list of stuff that I'm still working on. Yep, totally. So I think, I think that would definitely be something that we want to keep. The whole point being that there is at least one known juicy agenda topic in advance and but still open open for any and all agenda topics that people want to add throughout the week like it, it should be very much like bring your demos but you're like bring demos when you have them don't don't tell me what you did last week just because you feel like you should check in like there's one-on-ones and there's ilc for that kind of project management stuff so very much like yeah Terry, absolutely, like, there'll be an agenda topic, but I very much doubt that we'll, like, run on for an hour on a single topic, and we can make sure that we don't, and you just add, add things you want to demo and talk through as and when you have them. Cool. On which note, if I see no pushback, so I will, I'm thinking uh, agenda topic for next week might, it might be good to review uh, the OKRs in the sense that our, our top one is integrating uh, NPM on IPFS into desktop and um, we haven't made a huge amount of progress on that except for we're in a good spot in that we have a PR to desktop that will do the work of adding the command line tool to a desktop user's shell and replacing NPM if that is what is requested but we have a bunch of work to do to improve the UX of NPM on IPFS. It's just that Alex is, I think, focused on improving the guts of JS IPFS importer world. He's deep in uh, DAG proto buff sharding and migrating things to uh, async iterables. Anyway, so there's a bunch of like simple UX improvements that I think it'd be useful to talk through. So my pros is like next week, focus on NPM on IPFS is like the top of the agenda. Like get everyone's ideas on how to make it better um, because I think there's some low hanging fruit there and it would benefit from more eyes. Um, but please add other thoughts for other agenda items and we can set them. Like I think talking about the UI component library would be useful because it's been something we've wanted to do for ages and we haven't. Um, I'm, I'm also interested in like, I'm not super familiar with what's top of, top of your mind in, in web browsers world. So the agenda should be worked out together Chris Waring. Hi. <laughs> I thought I'd um, take the opportunity to share some of my thoughts as well on this uh, this topic because it's kind of I think I've hoped you originally to see if we this is room for maneuvering um, some of these ideas in. But 
right now, this would, yeah, exactly what Oli just said, sort of create more cadence and as this being the workshop zone. So it's like for us all getting together, using time um, for doing things that are quite hard to do via text. Um, so, you know, sharing topics, all thoughts, all the messy stuff that will, you know, we can get interesting ideas down and out. And then implementing that with a daily standup is a great way of just keeping that thread going. Because I think that as the call sort of grows and there's more people involved, then um, the standup stuff doesn't really seem like it fits well because um, it'll just take up more time in, in an individual topic. But my long-term idea would be to actually have a, a channel and a support channel for the community on the website that it actually becomes like a, a webinar route into this community call. So allowing people to suggest, it's like uh, a sideline channel so they could suggest ideas about like um, they want to come in and talk about something particular or they need help on a particular topic. And then we can also queue those things up into the agenda. Um, and that may either fall in this call or it might fall in the, the Monday community call, but uh, it'll give us a funnel potentially of amplifying some of the some of the ideas that we're, we're speaking about here um yeah and then obviously inviting guest speakers i think only touched on it briefly but um if we're like reaching out for topics say like how are we going to do a component component library and uh, we have friends in the community or uh, wider circles that might be you know like we could lean on them for support and they may be interested in joining then we could hopefully use that time for a uh, harvesting their ideas <laughs> and being a part of uh, a part of this community so um yeah Hopefully that'll work out. I don't know, but I'd love to try it. Super cool. Well, then it is quorum. We shall agree that the talk, this call will change as of next week more formally. Um, folks turned up to this call expecting the old style one. So if anyone wants to do an update on what they did last week and what they're going to do next week, they're still welcome. Um, or if anyone has any other topics that they want to add to the agenda, they should. I'm interested in, is there any other tweaks that we should make while we're changing this thing? Again, Dietrich, you've mentioned using a Google Doc is unhelpful in at least one regard. Should we change the notes taking? Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a change to Google Docs to make it more accessible and to, to various different people, whether their community or a technical or non-technical and, and obviously like, you know, GitHub and, uh, you know, uh, some of the other places where you can collaborate and mark down maybe are less accessible. Um, I, I guess my, my only, my, my thought there would be kind of the original question, uh, which is who is this, who's the call for mm -hmm. and who's, who's, who's actually uh, accessing the notes as opposed to video. So asking those kinds of questions might help us figure out what the, what the best tool is. The, the markdown converter was really the only thing that I was raging against the machine about the, <laughs> It, it really requires a lot of manual processing. I started to go down the yak shavery to the, the yak barber route yeah. of, of writing a new one. And I found 18 others that had been attempted. But I think um, stopped myself. Nice. I think that we, we have to see this call as first and foremost, it has to be useful for us. Like we're the ones turning up, putting in the work, sharing ideas. And I personally like, it's really helpful for me to see demos of what other people are working on. Um, but yeah, I think what I found kind of, what, I'm, what I found with the, like everyone feeling like they had to do a check-in was it seemed a bit like that it did, that had the benefit of everyone had a voice and you heard things that maybe people would be kind of too shy to talk about. Um, but, but also sometimes it just felt like everyone was just giving their like two minutes and then you know, like sit in the background and wait for everyone else to give their two minutes and not all of it was super interesting. Um, so I'm useful. To, uh, I just feel like they're having these sync calls for discussing things in a kind of more like, please give me your opinion kind of way, I think would be more valuable. And then I think framing things around a topic means that there is a secondary benefit of they are for the community to understand where our heads are at on certain topics and to give them a kind of bunch of faces and information that they're like, oh, I should talk to Dietrich about X. Um, I'm up, the, the reason I think I just switched to Google because I was like, oh, I want a stable URL, but I can have a stable URL uh, for the notepad, you know, in cryptpad or hackmd. So we can totally change that. I'll change that. Was there anything else? Hi. You were gonna... Hello. Sorry, I 
I think I'm part of the reason it started. I may be mixing up my calls, but it was extremely confusing to join this company and have every call using a different system and to not, like, the, the experience I'm used to is there's a meeting at a time, I go to the calendar, and I click a button in the meeting and invite to get to anything I need. So one button that always goes to the Zoom call and one button that always goes to the meeting. So, so, ha, so a stable URL is one of the biggest important things for me. Um, but also, as someone who's less technical than other people, who has no privacy concerns, like CryptPad, HackPad, all of this sounds like weird, scary stuff. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why there's two versions of the same thing on my screen. You don't know Markdown. Like, I just want to write words. If I, you know, if I'm going to write updates, if I'm going to read notes, just write the words. So, th those, th like, Markdown stuff is a little bit off-putting to normal people. Obviously, much less off-putting than JavaScript, but it's not a comfortable, welcoming solution. So, if it's just for us, I'm up to speed now, but if if we want to make stuff that's just like, okay, stranger off the street, what are they used to, what feels welcoming, that's the reason that I have been proposing Google Docs for everything. And I have also proposed and um, Lyle fixed this for me the other day to make sure that there's at least a couple of, like, I, I like to be able to refer back to the previous week or two of notes without going to a folder in GitHub to find the thing where they're stashed in case I want to copy something up, which I know we won't be doing as much of that with the new format, but those are my main concerns is really like being friendly to someone who hasn't been on the call before. That's it. And if you're not, if you don't notice to subscribe to GitHub updates, the way that some of the calls do things isn't as helpful to me as using, a, using the calendar itself. Yep, I agree with all that. Um, I think there's a there is an accessibility problem in that uh, there's a whole chunk of the planet that can't access Google Docs, so that's probably a problem um, too. But we can find a notepad, a shared notepad that has you know a couple of weeks of notes in it, and we yeah we can I think we can solve this. I will be proposing it before next week's call. Uh, anything else that anyone wants to talk about? Yeah, Martin. Um, sort of like a PSA, but uh, on the uh, Monday's uh, Go Core uh, weekly call, uh, we sort of uh, finally, uh, after a long discussion, uh, we finalized uh, the decision to switch base representation of CIDs v1 across both Go and JS to base 32. And that is just changing the default representation of CID v1. We are not changing CID v1 to be the default. CID v0 will continue to be the default, and that will continue to be in base 58. But we just will finally have one canonical representation of CIDV1 across all our like command lines, U UIs, web UIs everywhere. So that's uh, something that will probably land in Go and JS in following week or two. And yeah, just that is very cool. Um, as a fun demo to finish off the call, uh, Alan and I were just thinking about, Alan is tasked with an IPFS camp course, going uh, doing a deep dive on what happens when you add a file to IPFS. And he's not on the call and you know, we worked on it together so I can definitely blow the lid on this one. But we are, we're just looking at building a little tool to visualize the DAGs. So if you, it's gonna be drag and drop in at some point, but obligatory meme cat very good what happens when he gets added to ipfs he turns into chunks 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 now what's fun about this is you can change the chunk size and you can change the, the dag algorithm what's also fun about this is it's got a persistent thing in the background so if i was to add the same file again with say 
a balanced DAG structure. I can add the same one again on top and you'll see the, the kind of weird deduping because you're going to add the same file and get the same leaf nodes, but different metadata nodes. So you now, now start to see different things, like some of the nodes are like, okay, <laughs> the graph is like overlaying two different graphs of the that point to the same leaf nodes in the same repo. It's pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. Someone in the chat saying a word. Woo! Yeah, exactly. Um, and what else can you do? Uh, trickle DAG, that's weird. Has anyone looked at a trickle DAG tree? OMG, it is not the shape I thought it would be. Trickle DAG tree, trickle DAG tree. So trickle DAG tree is optimized for seeking into, seeking into video files. They don't look how you think they look. I mean, maybe that's what you think they look like. That's what they look like. It's cool. Um, anywho, so we're going to keep tinkering around with that. But yeah, you can you can futz around with the, the chunk size. You can say balanced tree. Refresh. Add the same file again. Can't see the buttons because of the The balanced one looks kind of how you might expect. It's a balanced tree. Ta-da! Um, yeah, no, that's all we've been doing. And um, I'm trying to think of a visualization for the life cycle of data, but they all seem really complicated. Uh, this is like adding, pinning, announcing, fetching, deleting. That's what I've been tasked with, and that seems really hard, so I've been helping Alan with his one, because that's the one that I knew how to do. Anyway, that's me. Oh, silent applause. I love it. It's my favorite band. Um, super cool. Okay, well, thanks for your time. Anyone want to demo anything, talk about anything else? We've got 12 minutes left, or we can get back on with the fun stuff. Um, one thing, maybe not so fun. Yes. It's always fun because you're all here. Um, for the logistics of how to do the daily stand up in uh, Riot, do we? Uh, or matrix IRC, wherever you wherever you choose. Um, we're just going to do that low text format for now. But are those notes going to bubble up to a document so that we can still see like a weekly overview, or um, is it I just would, it's just more of a transparent thing? I would um, I would continue to put your weekly notes in on the on this call document. I would preserve that bit. Okay. For now, I'm not proposing to change. Like, there's a document that goes along with this call where people can dump their like list of highlights so that if people are crawling over them, they can get a kind of overview of where everyone is at. Um, so yeah, keep dumping your, what I did last week, what I'm gonna do next week, notes in this call document. Um, but yeah, the daily the daily thing is just like a healthy healthy habit to be like, I'm gonna tell the world what I'm focused on. And ideally like exposing that to outside contributors who are like, okay, you know, Ollie's looking at DAG visualizers today. Hmm. I'll, I'll tickle him <clears throat> and and for your team yeah i think it's good still good information to see overall so just wanted to figure out where to capture that super cool all right so um, we're just drop, we're we're dropping those in either the normal GUI channel or the normal web browser channel yeah wherever you feel is is more appropriate for your daily standup Cool and the game. Well, any anybody else got anything that's troubling them? Yeah, Lyle, go for it. I like uh, this. It's like not troubling me, but I I believe like if someone is watching only this call, yeah, there there are probably people who are watching this call for some reason. Uh, there is a, like a weekly IPFS call. Uh, mm -hmm. when we have like a guest speaker on Monday, but also Oli uh, started a contributor office hours and I've joined this week and it was This fun. one turned out so, to be way more useful than I was expecting. Yeah, like people started uh, arriving a bit late. Uh, so I think we should like tweet uh, sooner or like 
maybe it was like the for the for the first one it was great so basically uh, there are some notes from that call and i also elaborated a little bit more on some questions that we started answering but we ran out of time uh, so namely if you are interested in running ipfs on your laptop or maybe running uh, go ipfs in docker and maybe even ipfs cluster and you want to quickly switch between different versions i just wrote some notes on that and next week there will be another contributor office hour so if you want to learn how to contribute to ipfs or maybe got some questions there's uh, like dial in one hour before uh, the weekly call and we will be there it was good did that get oh, sorry did that get added to the ipfs community calendar yes okay. it sure did um yeah last week's one was fun there was a moment when someone turned up and they didn't know their webcam was on and they weren't fully closed and it was like oh my god what have we done <laughs> we've exposed ourselves to the internet uh but he turned out to have some very salient questions and a t-shirt later it was great everything you want from an internet public webinar Dietrich. so uh it sounds like that it was not necessarily about contributing when i was hearing it certainly I've, i prefaced it with contributing to try and at least drag it marginally towards that end of the spectrum uh, but i do consider it open office hours like i'm 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 happy to answer all and any question that turns up but i but i figured if i marketed it as i guess my my question from from a, a long history of doing that type of contributor engagement is that the name might not suggest that in the engagement there might be lower than it otherwise would be if you just called it IPFS, you know, developer office hours versus mm. IPFS contributor office hours. Uh, yep. A lot of people end up start contributing to projects, not necessarily because they were like, I want to contribute, but because they were using the software and then want to make changes or something like that, or, you know, that kind of thing. You, do you think we would be, I think it'd be smarter to encourage more and more people to turn up. I, I don't know. I think I was, I didn't want a deluge of uh, blockchain enthusiasts giving me some hype chat. I, uh, yeah. And obviously, I mean, these first few meetings, the first one worked out and we got yeah. exactly the outcome that you wanted. That's great. Mm -hmm. It was just a thought that I had when I looked at the title of the meeting and that title might yeah. select a certain type of person and it might turn away people that actually might need our help more. Yeah. They might not be ready to contribute. They're like, I'm just trying to figure out how to get this stuff to work. Right. Yeah, no, that's reasonable. I think um, I think it was like, are you interested in any way, shape, or form of contributing to IPFS? Like, this is how I will signpost you to how you could start doing that. Um, but it, I can see value in a, any problems with IPFS at all. Um, I don't know if I personally have the an emotional energy to be the front. I guess, I guess like it sounds it's like that's what it ended up being. Yeah. Um, yeah. Either way. Yeah, as it happens, is there a channel for that already? Just like, oh, I'm st getting started with IPFS. Well, how do I get going? Hashtag IPFS. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that needs to Disc happen. Discuss.IPFS. No, I think, I mean, I think there's an assumption in the org that IPFS, hash IPFS on Freenode and discuss.IPFS.io is are supposed to be those um, but there's no like human on the end of a office hours call i mean there is now it's me um but do, are you suggesting that we could ramp that up somehow it's just as as um yeah as Dietrich was saying like um i'm just thinking setting the tone correctly so that we know what to set um, the expectation to um, if we if the intention is that we want to help the community more and we want to onboard people and we want to understand the problems they're having with IPFS in order to us to improve that experience then the call should be like beginner focused or project focused so like bring your or like a workshop bring your problems to us and we'll help you along kind of 
Um, Gatsby do similar things where they do a book a pair programming session for, for deeper things. So they allow uh, integration with um, independent team members if, they, if you want to help contribute to the problem um, further. But uh, I think as a general sort of like just paint the picture uh, style call, it would be nice to kind of uh, understand what people are having trouble with uh, in an open video style format. Mm -hmm. um, it would be it would be smart to think about what the what the pipeline is as well. Like if someone turns up to the office hours call and it seems like a much deeper, nuanced problem. Like what right now it's like, please file an issue on GoIPFS. But if it's not a bug and it's like, just you know, you need a better mental model of IPFS. Like, yeah, we don't have this like book a pair programming session. Uh, I'm not sure if we ever will, but it's worth thinking about. There is no there is no next step currently yeah it feels like it's a discovery if we if we help people like get to the right information then we know that actually we just it's this discovery issue but if it's more like oh actually that's a broken thing or, or we need to improve this thing then it's actually something we can work on personally as a team um yeah, yeah. i think the um the things you've been pushing about how gatsby does their community engagement i think is really great i think that's a good a good benchmark for making people feel like they are contributing to a project that is well organized and cares uh, specifically like, oh yeah terry <laughs> sorry i was just gonna say like we spent a lot of time because there was too much work on us on the community team <laughs> the defunct community team talking about like if we have to pick one audience is it new contributors or is it new users and the decision after much research by michael was it needs to be new users because that's the funnel to contributors like dietrich alluded to like that it is a big need and there are lots of questions around how to get started and whether that happens on video or somewhere else is but yeah. I, yeah in the in the meantime i'm just trying to make more of an explicit effort to idle in uh the IPFS channel on Freenode and answer questions there. Um, I can't really stand the discuss interface, so I struggle to answer questions there, but I should just hold my nose or maybe write a user style sheet because <laughs> um, people ask sensible questions there. But so yeah, in the meantime, before we have a strategy, like it's just a good reminder to everyone here present that spending a few minutes a day answering questions in those forums is really valuable. Um, and may not always feel it to you, but it is super valuable. And it's super valuable if more and more people start doing it, because a lot of questions seem to just sink. And if it becomes normal for all of us to spend like 10 minutes a day answering one question, like there's so many more questions going to get answered. Um, right on. Hey, Martin. Um, regarding like uh, the discuss uh, interface, uh, there's sort of like a hack to work around it. You can, uh, subscribe to a specific category in the mailing list mode. And there is a special mode when you are not receiving all the messages, you are just receiving the first message in a new topic. So you just kind of get informed about like, let's say you subscribe to the help category, you get informed about the new question and you can quickly like scan it if you can like answer and then like subscribe, opt in for receiving updates on that one over the email. So that's like a way to not work with the web interface, but still do not get overloaded by- Neat email. trick, I like it. All right, one minute to the end. Anyone got anything burning? Yep, DJ. I've, I've been taking this approach for the IPFS tag on Stack Overflow. So I just have a IFTTT job that posts any new IPFS tag topic to a private channel of mine, and then I can go check them out. Then it just shows you the first new post, not the thread. Yeah, hmm. seems to be the common problem. Don't deluge me. Yes, and all, all the questions are distributed, so we're going to find out where <laughs> all the sources of truth are. Um, Actually, yeah, I think I need to do some hygiene to, to figure out the landscape of, you know, where people are mostly asking questions and what type of experiences in what place. Um, maybe someone's done that at the company. If so, please point me in that direction. I'll be interested to know. Um, right, this is the first I've seen about the discuss forum as well. So, I think um, IPFS slash IPFS readme is a good place to kind of figure out where we're 
what we're pointing people at and ipfs slash community readme and the docs they're in are pretty good like just in terms of if you're trying to understand like where we as an org think people should go that's one side of it then the other side of it is like where are people actually asking questions yeah right on okay that's a more good more good discussion points for next week's call yeah but that has been the weekly all new style agenda focused discussion i liked it didn't hear much from hugo and diogo but that's because they agree with everything i think they're like it's pretty chill <laughs> given giving nothing away all right see you next week see you guys look forward to seeing your daily stand-ups peace